welcome to the new Shout series, Merlin I Am. And I say welcome during, this is the beginning of a new series. This whole year has been so crazy, weird, unexpected. There were even 12 shouts in the last series. But now I believe we're ready for the new series, The Merlin I Am. And so Adamus has told us, we are Merlin. So in spite of all the craziness and the changes and everything evolving around us in ways we couldn't imagine, we go, we just keep expanding and moving. So with that, let's use that as an opportunity to take the good deep breath, that breath of life. Take a moment and breathe for you, allowing the energies of Adamus here for each of us. Just take a good deep breath and breathe away any distractions and create the safe space with that breath. It's your safe space. All it takes is the good deep breath. And remember, no matter what's around you, it's all just your energy, all of us, each of us. It's just your energy. So take the good deep breath. Really feel into things as we are open to Adamus and his first session of I am Merlin, literally Merlin I am. Breathe for you. There's something happening here What it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I've got to beware It's time we stop, children What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down Battle lines being drawn. Nobody's right if everybody's wrong. Young people speaking their minds, getting so much resistance from behind. It's time we stop. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down.
I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Welcome to our new series, Merlin I Am. Hmm. Ah, it just takes me a moment to really realize what I'm realizing. <laughs> now we're in this new series. I'm, I'm, in a way, I'm looking back at myself from my book, Time of Machines, and uh, I'm looking back, f this book is looking back at me, it's the year 2020, and there's a group of realized masters, embodied Merlins on the planet, and we're launching into our new era. Uh, we put all the old junk behind us. The human has finally realized that realization isn't up to them. The human has realized that they don't have to work through all their issues. I don't have to go through all those tissues. All the tears and all the regrets and everything else, they've allowed the dragon to come in, tear them apart, receive the forgiveness from the I am. Meaning, hey, the I am, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. And then they allow their realization, or be they become aware of their realization. So I'm looking back at myself, hundreds of years, as we come into this beauty of embodied Merlins on the planet. No small task. I wasn't sure it could be done. I, it was a book, after all. It wasn't it meant to be literal fact. It was a book. But yet, we did it. I look back when I came to each and every one of you, 2009, the month of September, my first session uh, with, with Shambra. I looked at this ragtag team of pirates. Ah, I wondered how we were possibly going to do this. I had a plan, of course. I had divined, uh, devised a brilliant plan, a plan that had to do with theatrics. I, I pulled upon my lifetime as Shakespeare with the theatrics that would need to be involved. I pulled upon the sense of shock. Yeah, shock was needed because we just went along with the old new way, new age way of doing things. Uh, you'd have been fast asleep. So shock, provocation, a lot of provocation to keep you on the edge of your chair and the constant reminder of why you're here. You're not, you're not here as a hobby. If you were back then, you're no longer here. You're either on the other side or you want someplace else. But the constant reminder of what we're doing here. We've had fun along the way, I think, I hope. There's been some fun. There's been some fun. Had a lot of challenges along the way. There's been some challenges. There's been a lot of challenges. <laughs> and some literally dropped out because it, was, it wasn't what they were wanting, hoping for. Uh, and that's fine, because as I said back then, if it was just five. But here, we have well over a thousand now who have become aware of their realization. So we enter into a new era with Shambra, starting today. I have to say, I, I had to take a break, as you probably did, dear Linda. I had to take a break after uh, th this last series. I had to take a break for what, what you called your uh, September recess, uh, although I was busy, of course, with some of the events that you had. but. I had to take a, a different kind of break, a reflection break. Where are we going to go from here? How, what's our next step in this new era? I, I promise I'm, I won't drop this on Thank you. you or anybody. Thank you. I, uh, what are, how are we going to go into this new era with Shambra? What are we going to do? How, how am I going to change? Mm -hmm. I being St. Germain. How am I going to reorient now for the new consciousness of Shambra as we go forward? Can I cut back on the provocation? A little bit. Not, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Can I, can I be more entertaining? 
how could I possibly be more entertaining, <laughs> I ask myself. Uh, can I be more entertaining uh, a, a little bit? Should I be lighter and easier? I think no. not. Yeah. I think not. No. Should I, should I be more, how do you say, should I be more personal and interface with Chambra on a, a deeper, more touching level? It depends. It depends. I, I think this is not good social distancing <laughs> at this point. <laughs> should I have more gatherings with Chambra, our nocturnal, our nighttime gatherings? Uh, I don't think so. That was, uh, it served a purpose. So w how do I, how do I reorient myself? How do I redefine Adamus, which is really each and every one of you? What would I do different? Linda, any thoughts? Be a friend. Be a friend. Oh, yeah. Um, how, how are things going with all of your friends? Maybe I won't be th that That's friend. why I said be a friend. Be a friend. Oh, because you don't have any. Okay. Well, I, could, I, I would like one with your energy and at your level. Okay. Yeah. So what do I do to redefine, to update? All of you should update yourselves once in a while. What should I do different? Should I dress different? No, you're pretty handsome. I think Calder should dress different. I don't oh, know about me. Oh, stop that. What? Don't be mean to well, him. Well, sometimes he looks like he's going to Boy Scout camp. <gasps> uh, I like long, flowing robes. I like elegant clothing. You, there are nicknames you, that go with that. You dressed me well, You dressed me just fine for this Passion of the Merlin event. I love an uh, elegant jacket. and. Um, but we need support on realization. That's what we all need, Adamus. You need support? Yes. All you need is to realize you realized. How can I support you in that? Well, then to help us realize we're realized. Yeah. So no, it's I, a crazy world. Come on, you know it. Oh, it's a very crazy world. But you chose to be here at this crazy time. That's all I can say. So I, okay. I thought about it. I reflected. I paced back and forth in my elegant quarters at the Ascended Masters mm -hmm. Club. Mm -hmm. I have many other houses, but I do like staying there. I paced back and forth. What do I do with Chambra? How do I reorient myself to the way you are now? Hmm. And I came up with the answer. I'm going to be more direct with you. <laughs> what? Well, I'm going to be more direct. I mean, a lot of times, you know, I have to create this elaborate scheme to get your attention, and I think I've gotten your attention, so a little bit more directness. Okay. Uh, w wouldn't you enjoy that? Yeah, I, th I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a little bit more directness in the things we do. In other words, let's get to the point. We don't need to be doing a lot of dancing around right mm -hmm. now. We don't need to, uh, well, yeah, I'll be provocative when necessary. Uh, but one of the things is just everything's going to be a little simpler. Mm. A little simpler. Now, some of you may not like that because, well, the, the human by nature is not very simple, but the Merlin is. So oh. I'll be a little bit more direct, a little bit more simple, and uh, I'll be equally entertaining uh, mm. to you. Well, equally entertaining and um, maybe a little personally warmer with you. So, so I had to redefine myself to continue working with you. We're going to talk a lot about what it's like to stay here on the planet mm -hmm. as a master. It has its challenges. And no group has ever gone into this. Some individual uh, ascended masters have, but not for the length of time that we're talking about with you. So uh, we're going to be talking a lot about that. Mm. I also, uh, as I announced, I, I won't be here for uh, more than five years, maybe, maybe a little less, but no more than five years. I'll drop in for a visit now and then. I'll drop in to, uh, to entertain once in a while, but it won't be this uh, regular guidance because you're not going to need it. No, you're not going to need it. There will be plenty of you all around the world who are truly embodied Merlins, and other than just getting together once in a while, how's it going? What are you doing? What does it feel like to uh, be a Merlin? What are the big points that you learned along the way? You won't need me that much. Uh, uh, just fine by me. Uh, plenty of things to do. Uh, I'll always be with you, but we just won't go through the intensity that we have. Uh, I understand that uh, you and Caldera might be, be a little exhausted along with the rest of the Crimson Circle staff. So five years, um, and uh, there's, there is a lot to do in, in that time frame. But after that, it's up to you. 
it's up to you because what humans really want to see is a, a true master, not a bullshit master, not a pompous master uh, or arrogant or anything like that, but a real master. And there's attributes that definitely stand out, which we're going to be, well, you'll be experiencing, we'll be exploring. It's so much better if they hear the words from you directly, not, not through a channel, because a lot of them uh, think that's hocus pocus. They'll learn that it's just the art of communication, but initially a lot of them are turned off by that. Mm. So it's going to be you taking over, you defining, you uh, leading the next ones. A and I have to admit, there's another <laughs> kind of, um, oh, I say somewhat selfish reason for not staying longer than five years. You want to hear what that is? I'm afraid so. <laughs> You're afraid so. You don't need to be afraid of anything except yourself and me. Uh, no, the other reason I is quite simple. There's a new wave coming in. I mean, I can't say exactly when. You've seen a little bit of it, but a new wave. They're going to be attracted to this because there's a couple influences on, on it right now. The planet going crazier. Uh, it's not necessarily going to let up. When the planet goes crazier, people are really looking for direct answers, non machio real answers. And when they somehow find their way to Crimson Circle, they're not going to see a, a, a guru. They're not going to see um, even really an ascended master, uh, it, uh, other than one visiting. They'll be impressed that you have ascended masters visiting, but the crux of Crimson Circle won't rest on the shoulders of of an ascended master. No, they're going to see you, and that's, that's going to have a profound effect on them. They've thought about it, they've dreamt about it, meeting a real embodied master. And it's going to be you. And they'll come in from a variety of different ways. They'll, they'll find something on the internet. Uh, perhaps, uh, or just let's just say, maybe there's a dynamic that's woven into an upcoming film uh, that's going to be put out that will have worldwide appeal and that will bring a certain amount of attention and focus to Crimson Circle. Who knows? It'll come from a variety of different ways and suddenly there'll be a whole new, new, new group. I, I, call, I call you the founders, the ones who've been around for a while, the ones who are here right now, the founders. You helped really ground this energy. You brought uh, you brought a lot to this planet. If you take a look at the, what they call the content within Crimson Circle, all the, all the messages from Adamus and me and Kathumi and, geez, now you even have Sart in the mix on that. That's pretty good company, Sart, to be you know, right up there with the big boys. I mean, the real big boys. Tobias. I was getting to Tobias. She was whispering in my ear like, I'm going to forget Tobias. Who'd you, who'd you mention? Oh, Tobias. Yes, we have Tobias and the, the beauty of his, of his work, which will really appeal to a lot of the early ones. Uh, the, the Adamus materials initially might not really appeal to them. They might think that this Adamus is kind of arrogant <laughs> and pompous. Uh, you've learned differently, of course, but they might think that at first, like you've thought sometimes. But they're going to be attracted uh, they're, they're to this wealth of information that right now great efforts are being made to catalog it, to index it, to, to archive it, to file it so it's easy to find. They're going to come in and, uh, oh, you, you know how the new ones are? Uh, imagine you at your worst. Um, imagine you're, you're tossing and turning, not just in your sleep at night, but every day that you get up. You're somewhat imbalanced. Uh, 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 you're imbalanced between your spiritual awakening and, uh, and then wanting to stay as a human also. You know, that's interesting. You, you awaken, but then you try to, to stay as the human self that you were. Kind of doesn't really work so well, does it? They're going to come in and they're going to be filled with macchio. Macchio up to here. You know it. You've been there. And, and I'm not saying that you haven't been sincere. There's a difference between uh, sincerity and macchio. Macchio is generally an outward expression. 
whereas uh, everybody's sincere, but it just depends how much macchio crap you have to get through to get to the sincerity. Everybody's sincere. So you're going to have to contend with a whole mass of new ones coming in. All those questions, all that macchio, all the uh, defocusing and all the self-distractions, you know what they're like. I think you invented most of them, and then the others will follow. So when I say five years, I, I'm looking now at this new group coming in. Oh, they're going to be coming in fairly soon, and then it'll grow and grow. Mm. I don't know if I have the, um, the, the master's stomach to, hand, to go through it again. I think you wore me out uh, in what you were doing. I say that tongue-in-cheek. Lovingly, uh, right? Loving, absolutely oh, lovingly. But now it's your turn. It's your karma to deal with them like I dealt with you. You can answer their questions better. Uh, you, can, you can be a real embodied master uh, sitting there for them. And, and remember, as you go through all that, uh, the master really can be an intolerant son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, a- and that doesn't mean you have to sit there with a big smile on your face and sugarcoat everything. Sometimes you have to be, sometimes you have to be really damn clear. And sometimes you, you have to kind of be provocative. Sometimes you have to be a little shocking. And uh, here's one thing I really want you to do, all of you. As we're going into this new era. Let's put, let's put the past, let's put awakening behind us, let's put this whole search for everything. You take a deep breath and realize that you realized. That's it. Mm. It feels pretty good, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's it. So we put all that behind us. Um, and all that noise from, from the awakening that the new ones are going to carry. The new ones are going to have, and it's going to be a handful uh, for, for you, but there's a certain reward and satisfaction in it. There's a certain amount of reward and satisfaction, but for all of you, as masters, I'm going to give you a couple of inside secrets, things I've discovered. I haven't even really shared with the other Sended Masters. When you're working with them, and it doesn't matter if this is your new professional life, some of you it will be. Some of you will be occasional. Some of you will (laughs) be dragged into it reluctantly. But whatever you do, be a little, if not a lot, theatrical. (laughs) What? What, Did I say something? Was that that you, Linda, (laughs) laughing? Or was that... Be a little theatrical. Don't be so goddamn boring. Be expressive. Be full of life, even if you don't feel you're full of life. Work on your timing. Mm. Work on your delivery. Work on your voice. Have fun doing it. Laugh inside yourself as you're being theatrical. But theatrical is simply what, Linda? Simply what? Acting. Acting. It's the act of consciousness. The act of consciousness. It's the perfect book. It is the perfect book, written by the perfect author. A little expression in your life. And maybe I'm exaggerating, maybe I'm not. But you know how difficult it was <laughs> working with some chambre, and I wondered, are they dead or are they alive? They could barely eke words out of their mouth. Expression was like this. There was nothing. It was like that shell body that Sam used to inhabit. It was just kind of going like this. There's nothing wrong with expression. I know some of you think, oh, that's so embarrassing. So uh, really, does this look embarrassing? Uh, Aren't you uh, laughing a little bit, smiling maybe? thinking, oh, Uncle Adamus is just exaggerating. But isn't this better than just sitting here in the chair with my eyes closed and droning on and on? We all go to sleep. That's a big tip. Start working on it now. Sooner, 
than later. Yes, Adamus, we will do it. We will do it. We will do it. Good. Yes. Yeah, thank you. But it, just a little bit more, Linda. A little bit more expression. A, we will do it. But keep it family oriented all the time. Maybe not. I don't. Uh, you know, shock. No. Doesn't we it, will do doesn't it. Doesn't that feel good? Yes. In a way. Yes, I mean, it does. Part of you says, "Oh, that's so silly," because no. you've had all this co oppression on you, a and and. It doesn't mean you need to be wild. It doesn't mean you need to go crazy, because theatrics can also be so subtle. Theatrics can be a look with the eye, a very subtle look. I'm good with the lie thing. And a quiet voice I'm good with that says, lie. don't interrupt me, <laughs> Linda Avisa. The Master speaks now. Don't interrupt ever the master. And I'm teasing with you. But that's actually not bad advice. A little theatrics, please, a little spice in your life. Uh, I, I want to get back to the Adamus Theater. We used to do that, and it was uh, tremendous fun for me anyway. But uh, that's one of the things, as the master. Stop being a stick in the mud. Stop being monotone. Acting doesn't mean you have to go wild and crazy. It simply means you're aware. Mm. You're aware of your communications. You're aware that every part of you speaks. It's not just the words coming from your mouth, but it's the gesture of the hands. It's the expression in the eye. It's the look doesn't need a lot of words, doesn't need 25 words or more. It just needs a look. Is it acting, or are you finally coming back to the real, mm. unoppressed you? I do not know. So, Shambra, have a little fun with it. You're going to need it. I had to do it. Uh, I, I had to do it with, with Shambra, for the past how many years have I been here now? Eleven years, um, or more it seems. Have a little fun with it, okay? Have a little fun with your realization. Be a little expressive. I, I learned so much from, from Shakespeare in particular, and, and some from uh, my uh, lifetime as Mark Twain, but Shakespeare uh, went deep, went deep, deep into the soul. Okay, smile and do a little acting. So I had to redefine myself, and I'm just going to be more direct. I, okay. I, yeah, that's it. That's my. You want to say, what's the new Adamus look like? More direct. Okay. We're entering into a new era with Shambra. 2020, many of you realize, so many of you right on the cusp of being aware of your realization. I'll, I'll speak to that in a moment, but. It's time for that next era kind of um, change in, in Crimson Circle, even, in, in the organization. Uh, they are doing some adjustments right now, more to come, adjusting to you, adjusting to Shambra, and how they're going to work with you, how they're going to serve you. I'm adjusting, and certainly you're going through a lot of adjustments right now. Uh, these, aren't, these aren't painful adjustments. That they're kind of release adjustments. You release some old stodgy stuff, and you're really letting the real you come forward. Let's take a good deep breath with that, a theatrical breath. Okay, I think you get the point. Start having fun. Next. Coming to realization, becoming the Merlin. Let, let me go back to some of the basics on that. It's all a natural process. It really is. And there are the new ones who are going to fight you on that. They want to have, they want to have processes and procedures. They want to have systems. They want to have uh, certain levels uh, that they have to go through in hierarchies. Th that's the way humans are programmed. And even though a lot of the, the new ones, and it doesn't mean young ones, some of the new ones could be mm -hmm. older. Oh, they're going to 
they're going to really, what, what's your system? Where's your book? What are the guidelines? What are the rules? They're going to want to know all this. They're going to have a little hard time understanding it's all natural, but eventually, like you, they'll accept, oh, shit. That wasn't even up to me, the human. Why would I possibly have to have all these uh, procedures to get there? You just take a deep breath and you allow, and then it happens. What happens? In the background, the master has been going through cleaning up your crap. I, I, I'm sorry, your past experiences. The master has been going through lifetimes of past experiences and bringing them to wi uh, wisdom with that magic touch, bing, like that. Uh, you want me to do that again? Okay. With that magic touch, bing, it brings all of your uh, experiences to wisdom. One by one, the master goes through. Now, I could easily predict the date of your realization, because it's not you doing it. I'm watching as the Master goes through, and uh, the human level of resistance or allowing, a and just a certain kind of um, natural process that takes place, it was really easy to see. Okay, here's when the Master gets done cleaning up the house, going through all the past. And we do certain things to aid the Master. Uh, one of the big ones was ancestral freedom, wound of Adam, a lot of the other things we did, uh, is assisting the Master in doing that. It's basically you giving permission for the Master to go through and, and clean up. And when all that cleanup is done, when you reach kind of, it is a point of convergence, when the Master is no longer operating in your past, so to speak, going back into your old stuff, but now the work of the Master, having cleaned everything up, the Master is now working with the human on a uh, real-time basis. As soon as you have an experience, the Master is there doing the wisdomizing bit. It's happening uh, synchronistically. It's happening in real time. That's the point of Merlin emerging. Master's gone back and cleaned everything up in the past or brought it to wisdom even though the human may, may not actually be aware of it I, until later, even though the human is still acting kind of on knee-jerk responses to the past. And the human is still in that uh, perception that there was something wrong with the past, but then all of a sudden, one day, the human starts realizing, oh, I just am not dragging around that issue anymore. It's not an issue. It was just an experience. But sometimes the, the Master has truly done all the work, and the human is kind of still living on echoes of the past. The human will get over that naturally. You don't have to work at it. But now we have the Merlin emerging, because everything's been brought to wisdom, and wisdom occurs simultaneously with the human experience. That is realization. It was never up to the human. We talked about this extensively in some of our Kihak sessions, and also in Passion of the Merlin. So now you have realization. In other words, the Master has done his or her job. And now the human just means to allow the, the awareness of that. That's why some of you are still, some of you are really in anxiety right now. Like, oh, I'm not one of the 1,000 and 12 uh, that, that Adamus talks about. Well, you may or may not be, you just may not be aware of it. A lot of you are right there at the, the, the focal point, at the, uh, at the moment of the master being done. Maybe they have a few little details to clean up. The dragon goes in and goes for the deep dive, and you think your life is being turned upside down, but it's just the dragon cleaning up those last details. And then you're there, well, uh, maybe a week, a month. Uh, it really doesn't matter. What matters is for the human just to be aware of it. Uh, just get outside of your, your little box uh, sometimes, your brain box, and let yourself even pretend or act like you are aware that the Master is done. And in that pretending, you discover a truth that you are done. Sometimes you have to pretend or imagine. 
in order for you to realize what's really there. Some of you are you still are very, very mental, or you have such a uh, preconceived notion of what this should all be like, you're not even seeing what's right in front of you, which is your realization. I, I have no doubt that every one of you who's tuning in right now and is going to stay through the end of this session is going to have the realization it doesn't really matter when, and, and don't stress about it. The more you stress, the it kind of you, you keep yourself unaware of it. It's there. It is a natural occurrence. It's a natural occurrence for this to happen. Take a deep breath and let it happen. Stop. You're still thinking about it. You're still. What do I need to do? How come it didn't happen to me? Who did it happen to? Could I get the list of the uh, one thousand and twelve who it happened to? No. Stop. Shut the fuck up. I, t I told you it's going to be more direct, right? That's, isn't, isn't that direct? Very. Okay. So that's one of my deals. I'm going to be more direct. But stop for a moment and just let yourself feel into and be aware that the Master is done. We're just about done, and the Merlin emerges. And then we go from there. A lot of you are stressed, and oh, I, you know, maybe I'm making all this up. Yeah, yeah, and make everything up. So why not make up this anyway? Why not make up your realization? It's acting at its finest. So I, I felt a lot of stress around around Chambra, and I have to laugh. I mean, really, I, I shouldn't be laughing at you, but I do. I have to laugh. I'm being direct, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. tell me if I'm being too direct. Really? No. <laughs> no, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> I know Chambra's limits. Oh, and have I been there with them? <laughs> so where were we? We were talking about, oh, your realization. Uh, just take a deep breath. It's there. Okay? Just be – now let the human be aware that it is there. And you say, well, am I just making this up? I need something to happen on the outside as a sign that it's really – no, you don't. Not at all. Just take a deep breath. I love what Kathumi says, I am enlightened. That's all there is to it. Go about your business, go about your day, go about whatever you're doing, and now you're walking in it rather than thinking about it. You stress too much about something that's a, that's a natural process. A process – I can look you in the eye – hang on a second – I can look you in the eye and say to you that your realization is either already happened or it's right there. Take a deep breath. Allow it. Stop worrying. I know I'm going to stop worrying about it. We're going to stop doing a whole lot of talking about it because we're going forward. We have a lot to do. It's a new era of Chambra. It's, we're, we're preparing for the next wave to come in, but there's actually something far more important. Being here on the planet as embodied masters. The planet right now is a, is a wicked game. Mm. Oh, it's a wicked game. And it needs you here. I need you here. Mm -hmm. The planet needs you here. The Ascended Masters, the ones who come after you, the future, the past, it all needs you here right now. You don't have to do a lot other than enjoy your life, enjoy abundance, enjoy sensuality, but stay here. Oh, this wicked game the, the planet is involved in. And the game, if you really get down to it – I talked about it in Keyhawk. The game is really the game of the past and the future. They're the ones now at loggerheads. They're the ones that the past and the future are competing. In a way, that's a good sign because it's uh, it w it's marks uh, it shows that a huge cycle that's been going on for hundreds of thousands of years on this planet is ready to come to an end. When the past and the future are now uh, colliding and competing, as you may recall from your own life, when it's happening on a planetary basis, that's actually – it's going to be hard to go through, but it's a good sign that the planet is truly evolving and clearing itself. So you have this whole conflict of time right now. I love time. I love no time. I love free time. But I love the whole 
theory and concept of time. It's the glue that holds all this together. It's, it's what creates gravity. It's what creates physics. It creates everything. Fascinating topic. And we're talking about it a lot in Kihak. And we'll talk about it uh, to, to a degree here in our shouts. But you have the past and the future clashing. You can see it right now. Uh, look at anything that's happening around the planet that and in, involves uh, basically clashes, battles, uh, conflict. And you can trace it energetically to time, to time, to the past and the future. Neither will win. That's the amazing thing. You already know that. Neither wins. But what happens, the perception of past and future and time itself is drastically changed. That's what's happening to you right now with time. The whole perception, the thing that has been keeping you so locked in, the thing that actually holds what, what you felt was your karma, <coughs> the thing that held on to guilt and shame, it was time. And we're going to be time explorers as the true Merlin is. Realization. That's you're going to realize, and you're going to come back to me later and say, oh, Adamas, Adamas, I should have listened. I was stressing about realization. I, I still felt the human had to do it. And then one day, something happened, and I finally realized that I'm realized. Uh, the human became aware of the realization that was already done. And then you're going to say, why did you let me waste so much time on worrying about my realization? And uh, yeah, well, we'll wait for that moment to come. But well, I'd like to do something in the meantime, just to kind of uh, uh, assist and support you coming to your awareness of your realization. So I'd like to do a dream walk of realization. Um. Not not today, not today. Uh, no, I want to set this up very special, and and to do so. I've got to collaborate with uh, a group of the other Ascended Masters and then some on Earth who have already realized or become aware of their realization. We've got to set this up. There, there's a lot of parts and pieces to, to orchestrate. Actually, not really, but it okay. sounds good. Yeah, it does. Okay. So we're going to do this, and we're going to do a dream walk of realization, mm -hmm. where particularly if you feel that you're not realized or you're not sure, like one day you feel you realize, the next day you feel like you're a putz. We're going to do this dream walk of realization so you can, well, go into your realization, see what it's about, and then decide whether to bring it back with you or not. In other words, to be aware of it as a human. We'll, we'll launch this. We'll put it out. Let's, ah, good strategic date. This is going to be fun. What date? Halloween. Whoa. Halloween, the <gasps> Day of the Dead. Well, that's actually Whoa. the day before the dead, but who, the Day of the Dead, because there's part of you that, that has died. You just haven't buried it yet. <laughs> there's, well, I, I'm being direct. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, hear yeah. you. Yeah. No, there's part of you that died, but you're trying to keep it alive. You've got it on artificial, what do you call it, uh, support uh, systems, your emotions. Uh, you know, it's like the, the would be what what to uh, medicine would be the oxygen and the medications and the morphine and everything life else. Support. Life support. Thank you. Uh, and you're doing you're keeping some of the old uh, parts alive. I, I don't know why, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kill it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I mean that nicely. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna put it to rest is a better way to say it in this dream walk uh, of realization. So you can realize it was the past. You don't need to hold on to it anymore. And we're going to bring in the future, which is your realized self, which is already here. You just don't, you're not aware of it. We'll do it on Halloween day. And on top of that, I do believe that Halloween is very special this year because it is a full moon. Mm. It is a hunter's moon. Mm -hmm. It is the blue moon. So once in a blue moon, once in a blue moon, you allow yourself the realization. 
The blue moon's the time. It doesn't happen very often. Last time was oh, probably about 76 years ago where you had the, the, the blue harvest moon on Halloween. Uh, 1944, to be specific, hmm. another time of great change on the planet. Oh. So let's do it. We'll do our dream walk together on the blue hunter moon of Halloween 2020. Mm. Talk about an ominous title. Wow. 2020 is rough enough as it is, but Halloween with the blue moon, a great time for a realization. Okay. Deep breath. Yeah, you got to have fun with it. You got to, you know, one thing I, I, I did learn along the way is uh, it's really easy to get serious and to be pompous. I'm not saying I ever was, Linda, but it's easy to get serious and to be pompous. And uh, you're just so full of yourself. But underneath, you know what that fullness is, a bunch of crap. But you get so laborious and boring and tedious. You open up and you realize how free your spirit really is. That's what I love about acting. It's the free bird. It's the free energy. It is the free time that I exist in. So have fun with it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll hold applause for later. I'm excited. That's such a great idea for your dream walk. Oh, oh. Good. I thought so. Yeah, oh I my so. God! Yeah. What a great support. Yeah. It, 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 it'll be great fun, yeah. and to, you know, to have it, you know, occur on a certain yeah. calendar date, something intriguing, you know, uh, either a numerolo numerological date, which you know most of the time doesn't mean a thing, uh, but to Halloween full moon, the walk into realization. Will you come back or not? I'll make sure you do. That's, that's <laughs> a guaranteed and oh, this is going to be a paid event too. I mean, come on. I mean, why would it be free? You're going to get realized for what, how much you're going to charge for it? 25 bucks. You're going to get Whoa, realized. Whoa, that's a deal. That's a deal of the century. Wow. That's amazing. You know, it's discounted off of $27 million. Now you get it for $25. Wow. But act now. Space is not limited. But wait. There's more. <laughs> What's the more? Oh, you get the music. You get the music to go along <laughs> with it in case you didn't really like the dream walk, but you love the music. You get the free music to go along with. Have a little fun that's with so your exciting. expression. And that's one of the things I'm going to be direct about. Uh, I'm going to come up with a word. If I find you to be tedious and boring and, and basically a a lump on a log. Uh, I'm going to come up with a good new word to describe that. I'll call you out uh, on it. And no, I'll, I'll think of a word. It won't be nasty. It won't be like butthead or anything. But it will be a word that everybody, it's kind of like macchio, oh, uh, okay. which I, I okay. did not make up. Okay. But it'll be m like macchio, but this will be something that, you know, it's so definitive that you're, you're being a real tedious bore. And have a little fun. Act out. Okay, moving along. I believe. So, would you like the idea of the the dream walk? It sounds heavenly. To good, me. good. Uh, I like it. So, moving along. So, the other thing we're going to start, we're going to do is we're going to compile a kind of a uh, handbook, a guidebook. It's not not a rule book, but these are helpful suggestions for those uh, coming into their their realization. Uh, and, and But it's also kind of uh, documenting kind of your history, what you're finding. There's some things that I already know that will go into this, but then there are also things that uh, you're going to be discovering. And I'd really like to compile this. Uh, and we'll put it on the, the Crimson Circle to keep track. And Linda, uh, you know, and uh, Jean Tinder being content manager uh, to collaborate on this, to keep track of it, in other words. I don't have to publish it right away. We'll do it when it's um, got enough heft to it to really put it out there. But these are things, uh, something like, uh, we'll call it something like uh, uh, the uh, Merlin's, uh, Merlin's Guide to Embodied Survival. Uh, That's good. Yeah, uh, and, and yeah, I can I can already can see evolve, the the yeah. graphic on sure. the front cover, um, and Caldra thinks that he's going to do it, but no, I think I'll do it. 
It'll be direct. Have his word. It'll be direct. Have his words. Um, but as Merlins, it is going to be a little challenging, and I use the word little lightly. Mm-hmm. It's going to be challenging at times. Just because you realize doesn't mean suddenly uh, the world changes to adopt you. The world actually gets a little uglier in some ways and more beautiful in others. But it's not easy. That's why the likes of Sartre, they just uh, say, ah, no, I'm, I'm crossing over. FM. You know, they, they hit that place where, why stay? Why stay? And I think Sartre had some regrets about it at first. He felt that he, he maybe didn't live up to uh, himself or, or to you. But it is tough to stay. Now, the, the energies are being fashioned in such a way as to make it absolutely as enjoyable as possible, I guess you could say. We're working with the Chambre. The Crimson Council in particular is working to kind of uh, they can't do it for you, but they can help set up a dynamic to make it more comfortable to stay. Mm. Uh, you know, abundance for one. We we had to get over that abundance, and thank goodness that uh, for the most part that's done with. Either, either the 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 ones who were adverse to abundance have left, or you've realized abundance is natural. It's your energy. Why would you not be abundant? Uh, so. Staying uh, to make sure that you're abundant, to make sure that you don't have to worry about all the money issues. That's one of the big things, to make sure your health is balanced. And we can't do it for you, but we can certainly set up the table. (laughs) We can put out all the dinnerware and the forks and knives and the cups and glasses, get it ready for you. You're just the one that has to fill it with the meal. In other words, you're the one that has to ultimately do it. But we can certainly help set up the dynamics. There shouldn't, there, sh- there shouldn't be a single one of you that has to worry about some of those old needs as an embodied master. And again, we can help set the table. And you've got to come and sit down and eat at it. Uh, we, we, I don't want to go too much into this right now. Uh, Calder is seeing a lot, and he's getting confused. <laughs> uh, We've set up a special council within the council at the Crimson Council to work very closely with you who choose to stay, but you're still having a really tough time with some of the issues like health in particular. Yeah. We've got a whole, you can call it a health group, a health core uh, that's going to be working directly with you. They can't do it for you, but they can show you some energy dynamics that mm. you might not have seen because. You still have a tendency to get caught in your head uh, and and try to figure out things the old way. They're going to work with you on abundance. They're going to work with you on uh, knowing when – they're going to really work with you on knowing when to get away, uh, to get – just go off by yourself uh, on a retreat, a refuge. They're going to work with uh, you, the ones who uh, would choose it, to have a place that you can get away to uh, outside of your regular – home, someplace you can retreat to. You'll really need this. Whether you own it, whether uh, you you, uh, rent it, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's accessible to you. So we're going to be working with you on on those things uh, to make sure that you can stay here and be as, I guess, happy or fulfilled as possible. There'll still be some rough times because you're dealing with the world around you. Let, let me go through some of the first things that we'll, we'll enter into the, uh, the guidebook, the Merlin's Guide to Embodied Survival. A couple of main things. Number one, and this, is, this goes back to Tobias, stand behind the short wall. You know, uh, that's number one and for a very good reason. The minute you get entangled with politics, with trying to save the world, the minute you get all caught up in uh, masculine or feminine, the, the divine goddess or the shithead uh, masculine or whatever, the minute you go there, light and dark and all the rest of that, it's going to drag you in. It's going to suck you in. 
And even though you're an embodied master and you say, yes, but I'm beyond that, it's going to at least grab one of your legs and pull you in, a- and maybe up to, your, up to your chest. It may not totally pull you in, but it's useless. It's a, it's a totally waste of energy to get in, in, embroiled in that. Neither side is ever going to win. I'll tell you that right now, whether it's light or dark, good or bad, masculine, feminine, Donald Trump or Joe Biden, nobody ever wins. And you say, well, yeah, but somebody's going to win the election. Oh, really? Oh, really? Uh-oh. Well, I'm, I'm just being direct. Uh, even if it takes a while to determine who's going to be president, they don't win. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, and neither side no, ever wins. Cool. As long as there's duality, as long as there's these conflicts, which humans seem to love, they're, they're addicted to them, uh, there's going to be these battles. Nobody wins. Stay the hell out of them. That's not why you are here. Mm-hmm. I will go so far because I'm direct now. I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wear. Get you a new t-shirt. T-shirt. Yeah, I am yeah. direct. I am direct. Okay. If you still feel the need to get involved in these things, leave right now. Leave Crimson Circle because you'll end up leaving later. You'll end up leaving in six months or a year because you're still addicted to causes. There are no causes on the planet. There really aren't. There's only people who fight causes. This planet would resolve so many of their issues, hunger in the environment and wars, if people stop fighting for causes. It's the fight. It's the people that perpetuate these causes. The solutions to every one of these things is already there. The environment, the energy crisis, uh, you know, with the uh, uh, the gasoline engines and uh, the, the monetary, it, uh, the solutions are right there. But as long as people are fighting, taking up sides, not listening and not going within, these battles will continue. Mm. And you can't blame it on the other guy. And I know some of you right now are really upset with me, and that's good. You really need to consider whether you're going to stay with what we're doing, because I will not. As long as I'm here, I will not tolerate that dualistic, addictive behavior. And you're saying right now, oh, Adamus, you don't understand. The world is a terrible place. No, it's not. You don't understand. If you're calling it a terrible place, if you don't have the compassion to allow others to have their experiences, no matter how they want to have them, you don't understand. You don't understand that the answers, the solutions for this planet are relatively simple, and it starts with a few people who have allowed their realization. They're not battling anymore. If you are battling, you are not realized. If you are in a fight or a cause, doesn't mean you can't have your opinion about it, but have it behind the short damn wall. Get behind the wall and stay there planet is going crazy right now with people who love battles. Uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it kind of provides a, uh, an emotion. It provides, uh, gives them a reason to want to live. It, it gives them something to fight about. You all know it. You, you, some of you have come from families that love to fight. And uh, you, you know that that's what they live for. Uh, they complain about it. They blame everybody else, but they love to fight. So Number one in the handbook, stand behind the short wall. Number two, understand that you're in the world, that you're existing in the world, but you're really not of it anymore. That's a tough one because you want to do both. Uh, You want to be in the world and you still want to be of it. And there's going to be times where you feel lonely and separated and very different. You're going to feel very, very different. And I know you did when you were younger, but I mean, this is different, different. This is, when you were younger, you wondered if you were different. Now you're going to know you're damn different. So you're going to be in the world, but you're not of it anymore. And there's a sadness with that, because you love this planet. It doesn't mean you can't love it, but you, you have such a, kind of almost a melancholy feeling. But understand, you've transcended that. You've gone beyond the linear world. You can still do the and meaning that you can exist in it, but 
It no longer owns you. That's what, for most of the people on the planet, humanity, the planet, whatever you want to call this, owns them. It doesn't own you anymore. You can love it. You can admire nature. You can enjoy good music. You can enjoy humor and dance and the arts and business, uh, whatever you want, but it's no longer yours. No longer yours. Let's take a good deep breath with that. Next in our handbook, communications. Be aware that communications change drastically for the embodied master. What, what does that mean? Several things. First, the internal communications. You've been chatting away in your head for God knows how long, how many lifetimes, chatting away in your head. You got this, you got mind talk perfected, you know, uh, brain bullshit uh, perfected. And you go back and forth in your mind, and you've created different parts of your mind that talk back and forth. It's still your damn mind. The master transcends that. They, they don't have to work at it, it just occurs. But be aware that it's occurring. That's the important point. Be aware that it's occurring. There's a new sense of communication within yourself. And it's not your spirit guides talking to you. It's not me talking to you. It's really what you could say your essence. It's really you, the true you, talking. It doesn't necessarily talk in human words, but it may. Uh, first, you may just think it's you with yet another uh, bullshit part of your mind talking. But then you realize it's profound, and you realize the simplicity. And that's how you know it's different than your brain talk, that brain banter that's been going on. The communications get very clear, and they get very real. And there's no doubt when you're in that sense of communication with yourself. Your body communicates with itself, in, in not in a language, but with uh, energy impulses, known as the aniatron, which is slowly going away. You've communicated yourself from uh, you know one <laughs> cell tower in your brain to another cell tower in your brain, and it's incestuous, closed loop circle system. But now you have a different type of communication coming in. It's simple, it's effective, and it's outside of the brain. Be aware of it. You don't have to work at it. Be aware of it. Do a little breathing, and you'll start to sense it. It's you, but it's not confined to your brain. It's your, what you would call your facet communication system. It's the connecting of uh, dots or um, really points of uh, points of, uh, not separation, but points of um, networking within yourself, going all the way to the I Am, to the Merlin, to the Master, to, your, to you, past lives, uh, past and future, which are now combining in its very simple stuff. It doesn't get complex. If it takes, if it takes pages and pages and hours and hours, it, it's, it's just your brain talking. If it's simple and it's like that, then it's you. Your communications with others changes. Some of you are pretty good communicators, but you use a lot of words. You use brain calm, meaning that you're talking from your brain to someone else. You're using words that are pretty flat, pretty boring, and very unenergized. What you're going to notice is your communications with others suddenly changes. You need very few words. And that's kind of what the, what the true master, the true Merlin does. Very few words, because you don't need it. It's all right there in presence. And the mind may say, well, we have to really explain this in great detail, ad nauseum. No, you don't. The master can say a few words to someone, and there is a wealth, a plethora of energy communications behind it that they may not get right away. It might take them walking down the, the street or sleeping overnight on it, but it's there. Start being aware of this new communications with others that doesn't need a lot of words. Maybe you could use a little theatrics. 
Maybe it could use a little timing. Timing is very important. Maybe it could use just a little bit of uh, expression, but start realizing that there's a new level of communications with others. Right now, the communication is like brain to brain, and and uh, that causes a lot of confusion, a lot of misunderstanding. Start being aware of the new communication that's taking place. You could be sitting with somebody, saying very few words. There is a tremendous communication taking place with them. Don't be afraid to open up that part of yourself. A lot of you have been shut down. You don't want to expose that part of you. Get over that now. It is okay to open up. They're not going to steal your energy. Well, we spent years and years and years on sexual energies, uh, really developing that. They're not going to steal your energy right now unless you want them to. So the whole communication system changes. And not overnight. But, but these are the things, this is part of the survival guide for the embodied Merlin. They start to realize the whole communication gig changes. Then there's the, the simplicity. The human mind makes everything complicated, as complicated as it can be. You can give a human a very simple uh, question or a simple task, and they will make it complicated. So what the brain loves to do, it justifies the brain's existence. The brain feels like it's expanding. It gives it identity. But the fact is that it's all brain shit, and it's complex. It's very complex. By the way, I can just see uh, Gene looking for some quotes to put on your Crimson Circle internet homepage. Uh, that was a good one. The, the, uh, we're attract the new ones. They'll, they'll love that shit. I mean, I mean, they'll realize this group is either for real or crazy, and they'll probably be attracted to you because you're crazy, or both. Or both. So, simplicity is uh, is a key to things. The master's life is simple. The master doesn't need to make it complex. And in that simplicity is not boredom, but actually the ability to perceive things they never would have perceived before. You still tend to make things complicated, and I'll call you out on it. Why are you making it so complicated? It's really simple. And then you'll fight me on it. Oh, Adamus, you don't understand. And I understand. You like making things complicated. Do you want to make them simple? That's what the Master does. So you start to simplify your life. Uh, what does that mean, simplify your life? We'll talk about it a lot more, but it means to get from point A to point B. You take the direct route instead of, uh, I forgot what we called it, uh, wiggle womp or uh, niddly diddly, uh, which the human tends to do, higgly piggly, whatever it is. It's the direct route. Whether it's from creation to manifestation, take the direct route. Why go wandering off in the woods? Why pretend to get lost when you just take the direct route from inspiration to manifestation? from change of consciousness or perception. Why spend a lot of time thinking about it? You just do it. You simplify it. Uh, it's going to be one of, the, one of the early entries into this uh, survival handbook. Then in the survival handbook, let's just take a deep breath with these. Let them really feel into it for a moment. Simplified communications in the world, but not really of it anymore, not yours, and stand behind the short wall. Very, very important. Two more, and then we'll move on. Uh, two more. So uh, beauty. Beauty is another thing. As you simplify your energy, you now are aware of more beauty than ever. Not bullshit beauty, not, not things you are just kind of making up, but real, sensual, profound beauty. In what? In what? It could be in anything. In yourself, that's a good starting place. You truly see the beauty in yourself. Beauty is one of the, uh, what we call the angelic senses. It's inherent in your being, but 
you really haven't used a lot being a human on earth. So now you have beauty in your life. Could you imagine? And you see the beauty in, in the clouds. You see the beauty, uh, in, you hear it in music. It, it's the more sensual life. Uh, we'll be coming back to that. I, I want to jump back to communications for a, a moment. You learn to communicate different with yourself. That's a big step. Then you learn to communicate differently uh, with other people. Not so many words, but it's all right there. Then you communicate with everything, you know, whether it's a tree or your car or uh, a bird or your dog. Communications become very easy and fluid. They're no longer regulated by the mind. The communication is there. The communication doesn't mean having to use words. Communication is an energetic uh uh, either a, a, a receiver or uh, what do you call it? The either uh, projecting or receiving, transmitting or receiving. So you communicate with everything. And some people might think it's silly that you're communicating with your car. You're you're you don't have to be talking out loud, but it is the most natural thing in the world to communicate with everything. Inanimate objects. Coffee cup, pumpkin, uh, the communication, and and it's all natural because it's all yours. It's all yours. So let, let's go one more thing. So we have we have this beauty out there, and that's one of the things that uh, is in the handbook because the master starts realizing really the simple beauty. In everything, and we'll hold it there for now. Well, I've got a number of others, but um, we'll, we'll take that for another time. Let's start building this. Uh, add your input to whether it's through social media or uh, connecting with the, with the Crimson Circle. Let's start building this handbook. First of all, so you're aware of what's going on, and second of all, for the ones coming after you, particularly when they get really tedious and. Oh, you just they're they're trying to suck your energy, which they really actually can't do. You just give them this handbook and tell them <laughs> to, to read up on it. I'm being slightly facetious. Next, this is the big one. I want to allow some time for it, and we'll be talking about it in in our upcoming sessions. Next is a big one, and it's a sensitive topic for many. Uh, it's sometimes, uh, you could say, even an embarrassing topic. You wonder how you ever got yourself into this. It's a topic that uh, we'll approach gently, as to not overwhelm anybody. And the topic that really is so relevant to, to most of you right now is ED. ED. <laughs> Ener- Educational delight. Uh, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> ED, and that is for energy dynamics. Life f- for you has been very practical up to now. You look at things from a practical level, which is good. You say, uh, I cut my finger and it's bleeding, and I cut it because I wasn't being careful with the knife. And then you go to the doctor and, and they sew it up and give you some uh, stitches and maybe some medication. And that's a practical look at why you know what happened with your finger. There's an energetic thing going on. Once you understand the energy, then you can really affect change. That's the Merlin. Let's say you get into a, um, a slight car accident, and you're mad at yourself, and you're wondering if you're really a Merlin, and you're angry with uh, the person because their car shouldn't have been <laughs> right in front of yours when you hit them. And you go into all the practical things. Maybe you didn't get enough sleep, and if they were driving recklessly, or you were in a bad mood, or you were daydreaming. That's real practical. And practically, your car hit theirs, now you're in trouble. Now you've got uh, insurance issues and paperwork, and you've got the police wondering if you were drinking, uh, all these practical issues. Stop. Let's stop living like that. Let's take a look at the energy behind things. 
And there's still the practical thing that happened, but let's start looking at the ED, the energy dynamics behind everything that happens. For instance, uh, going back to conflict and politics, many of you are looking at the practical nature of, let's say, uh, the elections here in the U.S. And some of you are really in the battle of it. Get out of it. Jeez. I mean, you're just wasting your time and mine. Get, get away from it. Run away from it. Because it doesn't make a difference. What makes a difference is you being an embodied master and understanding ED, energy dynamics. So you've got this whole dynamic. Uh, uh, let's say you are you don't like Donald Trump and you're ranting and raving about it. Step back, look at the energy, not at the what you see from a practical standpoint. And I'm not saying this is exactly how you should look at it, but if I look at the energy dynamics, the United States of America needed a change. Uh, they needed something to shake up uh, and get people out of their comfort zones because not a lot was getting done. And they needed a reason to talk. They needed a reason to even get upset. So what happens? They elect a president that does just that, serving them. And that's the energy dynamics. Whether he wins again or not, uh, no matter what, uh, stop looking at the linear human mm. practical part. Look at the energy dynamics. Stop looking at which party is better, uh, anything like that. Look at the energy dynamics of what's going on. Uh, some of you might be disgusted with, uh, with politics right now, and that's fine. But step back and look at what's really happening with the, with the energy on the planet. The environment. Now, it's really easy to get caught into this, uh, what I call the, the, <laughs> the carbon uh, footprint addiction. And you know, suddenly you got your good guys and your bad guys. You got the oil companies, and you got uh, the the green workers, and 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 you feel righteous about it. Step back, look at the energy dynamics of what's happening. What's happening right now, from an energy dynamic standpoint, is that Gaia is leaving. It's time for humans to accept responsibility for the planet. So there's a lot of attention focused on it. You've got things like the uh, polar ice caps melting, for sure. Is it a result of the environment or carbon, uh, the, the warming of the planet? Well, certainly. But there's something beyond that of what's happening on the planets. It's the handover to the humans to take responsibility. Taking responsibility means understanding how biology works on the planet, how rhythms of biology works, how how energy works on the planet. A and therefore, humans can then really have Gaia serve them and they serve Gaia. But you get all embroiled in battles about uh, uh, you know, who's, who's disposing of uh, excess paper, little things like that, control issues. You've lost the point. You're back practical rather than energy dynamics. Your family, for instance. Uh, if you're I embroiled in some sort of argument with your family, it's probably gone for lifetimes. You're looking at it from a practical level. Well, that person lied. That person stole money. That person is trying to uh, screw us all out of the will. That person uh, is a degenerate. Yeah, it might be. But stop. Look at the energy dynamics. What's really going on with the family right now? And maybe what's going on is a few of them are trying to break free of that old family karma pattern, and the others aren't really willing to let them go. Maybe some of them don't even know that they're trying to break free, but you do, because you're looking from an energy dynamic standpoint. Uh, my point is, and we'll do a Marab here in just a moment, my point is start looking at things in terms of energy dynamics rather than the practical, linear, mental. When you do, everything takes on a, a different meaning, a different look. You no longer get entangled in all the details. You're simplifying things. 
And therefore, the answers are right there. They become very, very clear for you. This will take a little bit of discussion, uh, not just in this show, but in others, about energy dynamics, how to, how to recognize energy rather than just details. All right, now, let's take a deep breath, and let's bring all this today to Morab, but with a focus right now on energy dynamics. Let's take a deep breath with the music. Humans are basically have been trained to just look at the practical. The cut on their finger, the, the like I said, the imbalance in their biology. Maybe it's something like uh, diabetes. And they look at things like glucose levels and food intake and all these type of practical things, but well, that's just on a practical level. Sure, it's good to know them, but once you understand the energy dynamic of diabetes, it's pretty simple. It's, it's kind of, I guess you would say, symbolic. It's a craving for sweetness or maybe love. Craving for some sweet love and attention. Maybe you didn't get it as a child. Maybe from another lifetime. Maybe you're not giving it to yourself. That is the energy dynamic which subsequently causes an imbalance in the biology, which may be labeled as diabetes. And do you think really just eating less cake is going to help solve that? No. It may kind of slow it down a little bit, but you're trying to crave that sweetness, that love through cake, and then you have to deny yourself of it because the doctor said your diabetic level, whatever it is, too. You're just going to look for sweetness somewhere else. Not necessarily in cookies or ice cream, but somewhere in life. And maybe you have your diabetes control, but now you're off kilter somewhere else in your emotions. Suddenly you become needy, relying too much on others. It's, it's just, it's, you transpose it, you put it somewhere else, that neediness. What about addressing the energy dynamic? Why is this there? As your communications improve, you can literally ask, why is this there? And you get the answer. Not, not when you're all in your brain kind of communications, but in the true Merlin communications. There's an energy dynamic to everything, everything. There's an energy component, not just to things that are imbalanced in your life or in the world around you, but to everything. When you understand the energy dynamic, then you really start living as a Merlin. Uh, I'm asking Caldra for permission to give a little bit of his story, recent uh, thing. He's okay with it, so. So Caldra just bought a new car. It was about time. <laughs> and it's a beautiful car, but well, he. He was going to miss his old car. It served him well. Got him around. No accidents. Hardly any bumps or bruises. Just a few little nicks here and there. Got him around. But he decided to get a new car, and there came that whole question, you know, was, was he abandoning his old car? No, no. Don't need to abandon it at all. Look, instead of looking at a practical level that you're trading in one piece of metal, and getting another piece of metal with wheels, you're you just well look at the energy dynamic. So what he did was literally take the energy, the essence from his other car, which he loved, and transferred it to the new car. That's simple. 
Now, if he wasn't told this to people on the street, that may think he's a little nutty, but you know, you're going to get to the point where you're like, well, yes, of course. The people who don't understand this, they're going to be a little nutty. The new one's coming in. They may look at you a little odd at first, but then they're going to go, I know, I've always thought that, but I could never tell it to anyone. So what he did was simply take the energy essence from his car, and it got a new body. Same essence, same energy dynamic. Now in a whole new body. Wouldn't, wouldn't you love to have that? Wouldn't you love to just wake up in the morning, you got a total new body, 2021 model. It'll, it'll be possible at some point, yes. Look at the energy dynamics in everything, the environment, the politics, relationships, your body. Everything is your energy. Everything. But up to now, most of you really weren't looking at that component. You looked at the practical part of it. You looked at the practical part. You looked at your bank account and you looked at it and you said, oh, I you know, have $927.42 or euros. Well, that's the practical part, but look at the energy dynamic of your bank account. Okay, it might be, it might be a little lacking, but look at the energy dynamic of why. Why? Well, because you've been giving it away to everybody else. Because you haven't considered yourself worthy. You feel into that energy dynamic of your bank account, instead of getting all frustrated, say, what can I do to make more money? Feel into the dynamic and then allow the energy to change. Allow it to serve you. Realize, looking at the dynamic, oh, boy, I just haven't been letting it serve me. Now I'm going to. That's the energy dynamic. The amount in the bank, what bank it is, those are practical issues. Those aren't at the core. Those aren't where you affect change. You don't look at your bottom line in your bank account and think that's where change starts. No, it's in the energy dynamic, your relationship with energy. There's an energy dynamic in everything, in your house, you know, it, it has energy, it, it, it has a personality, a personality that you gave birth to. Feel into the energy dynamic, not the practical things like the light bulbs that are out and the plumbing that might have some issues and the fact that the wind blows through some of the windows on a, on a windy day or uh, none of those things or that it's in a noisy neighborhood. That's practical. And you're not going to affect change at that level, period. Yes, you can put some tape over the leaky window. You can replace the light bulb, but you're still in the same old energy dynamics. You've got ED. <laughs> what you do is you rise above that. You feel into the entire issue of your realm, of your domain. Feel into that energy dynamic, and then, then you're real bold and say, I want it to serve me different. I command my energy to serve me different. Don't be a wimp. Don't negotiate. It's your own energy. Why would you need to negotiate? It, it, it's sitting there wanting to serve you. So, dear masters, dear Merlins, we're going to acknowledge the practicality of life in the physical, but we're now going to be addressing the energetic dynamic. That's where the change occurs. Let's take a deep breath with that, feeling into it. Life as a Merlin. It does indeed have some challenges. Challenges being amongst other people who are continuing to 
feed their addiction to drama and conflict. The challenge is going to be being with people who are who have almost no creativity when it comes to resolving issues. They would rather fight than fix. That's going to be difficult, frustrating at times. That's when you're going to need to retreat, to go on a retreat, to take refuge, to be by yourself, because well, it's going to be easy to get pulled into at first. There's going to be that standing behind the short wall. Don't get into it, really. I'm going to go so far as to uh, throw a little gasoline on the fire here. And this I'll have fun with. The Crimson Circle social media. <laughs> Wait, look at the energy dynamic there. Mm. It's not a place for, uh, for politics. It's not a place for even saving the planet. It's a place for communicating, with sharing with other masters. I, I, wouldn't, I would throw out anybody, anybody's post. Calder is correcting me here. I'm not real. I did my first post today on social media. It was uh, through Calder. His fingers did the typing, but it was my post. I'd never done one before. I didn't know if I'd like it or not, but I did. I posted. Calder actually changed it, but I, I was going to post, stand behind the fucking short wall. And he, he just posted, stand behind the short wall. But I don't know why he took that word out. I thought it was rather appropriate. But that was my first post. And, and when I did that, it was kind of an exhilarating feeling. I felt it going out there onto the internet. I felt it landing on that place. I felt others then going and looking at it. I, I decided at that point that I kind of liked this social media thing. But. I'm going to always limit myself to five words, maybe six, uh, six words. Stand behind the fucking short wall. It's the only thing I'm ever going to post. Stand behind the fucking short wall. I, I, I like doing that. Yeah. Now, I'll have to warn you, Calder might change it. It might just say, stand behind the short wall. But. You'll know when you read it. Stand behind the fucking short wall. Back to the point. We're going to look at energy dynamics, not the practical. I don't want to see a bunch of political or any of those kind of posts that get you trapped into the combative nature of human nature. Not a place for it. Our place in your social media is the evolving Merlin within. You get trapped in taking sides. You get trapped into the conflict, and uh, there's no place for it. So let's take a deep breath as we go into energy dynamics. It's going to be core to this whole Merlin's guide to embodied survival. Let's take a good deep breath in the beauty of our first shout here on the planet. First shout in the Merlin, I am. And I hope you appreciate that I'm just going to be more and more direct. That we, let, let's just go from point A to point B, from, from imagination to manifestation easily, without diddling around. With that, my dear friends, we'll be back for more, and especially for our Hallow Halloween dream walk of realization. Let's take a deep breath together. I'm staring back at myself from the book Time of Machines 2020. I'm staring back at myself in my lifetime as Adamas. It's amazing what Merlin can do. Thank you, dear Shambra. I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. And so it is. And so it is. With that, let's take the good deep breath and let this new message from Adamus 
Let it, let it flow. Just allow it. Just really take some deep breaths and feel into like, what is it like to breathe and stand behind the fucking short wall? To just be. Take that good deep breath and feel into it. Adamus, more direct with us than ever. What an incredible promise. Can you breathe that in? Really allow that. Be with that good deep breath. This new Merlin I am. Such an amazing, amazing beginning. Just beginning. So take the good deep breath and breathe in with the appreciation for what it is each of us feels with our own energy. And most of all, thank you to Jeffrey Hoppe for being so bold and willing to channel Adamus Saint-Germain. We'll be back the first Saturday of November. We'll be back for Shout 2 from the Merlin I Am. Thank you all and stay with good deep breath.